Hi everybody, my name is Dawn Breen and I am Associate Curator of Decorative Arts here at the Frick Pittsburgh. In celebration of RAD's 25th anniversary, we are bringing you this video series taking an inside look at the Frick. And we're standing here in the children's entrance at Clayton, the historic home of Henry Clay Frick and his family at the turn of the 20th century. This space is also home to the silver storage vault behind me. And if you've ever been on a tour of the house before, you might have had the vault pointed out to you as you exited the kitchen and made your way into the back hallway towards the breakfast room. But the space is really easy to miss. The metal door has been faux grained to look like wood, so you think you're passing by just any other ordinary door. But the camouflage hides lots of treasures behind. So we, let's take a look. A really satisfying sound. Okay. All right. So here it is open and it's kind of an artwork in itself. It's really beautiful. It has a fabulous stenciled and hand accented logo of the company that they purchased it from who installed it in the house, the Barn Safe and Lock Company. There's even some faint decoration down here on the steel bar. It's a really beautiful object. Um, and we can date the vault to about 1886. That lines up with some documentation in the family archives, so we guess that that's when it was installed, which would mean that it stayed in place during the renovation and expansion of the house in the early 1890s by Frederick J. Osterling, that he would have worked around this structure which stayed in place. Uh, so the person who would have accessed the, the vault most frequently was the butler uh, because the Frick family would have used this vault to store silver serving pieces like soup tureens, punch bowls, candlesticks, flatware services, anything that they needed for entertaining. And as a museum, we're using it the exact same way as secure storage to keep our objects safe. So I'll give you a little peek inside and then we can take a look at some of the contents which we pulled to the other room. So the person who would have most frequently accessed the silver vault was probably the butler. He would have kept a detailed inventory of all of its contents um, and in close coordination with Mrs. Frick as the lady of the house, he would have pulled all of the necessary dishes and trays for dinners, um, coordinated any polishing that the objects needed, and then made sure that they were cleaned and stored away at the end of the evening. So kind of similar to the butler, um, we also keep track of all of the contents of the inventory. So most of our silver objects are stored in numbered boxes, just like this one, which we use to track their location in our collections database. And then a lot of the objects are um, stored in these kind of funny Ziploc bags. These are special corrosion intercept bags and they help keep the silver tarnish free and looking its best while it's in storage. So we can unpack one of these objects. This is something that the butler might have pulled out for a dinner. This is a really fabulous, sweet little nut basket. It has this kind of open work trellis design on the bottom here. You see Mrs. Frick's monogram AHCF in the bottom of the basket. And then these would have been used um, placed next to each individual's plate setting at the, din the dining room table as just kind of a little fanciful decoration for an event. Some of my favorite objects in our collection are these two from the Whiting Tea and Coffee Service. These objects are by the Whiting Manufacturing Company. 
They were a competitor of Tiffany and Gorham in the 19th century and we know that this service was gifted to Mr. and Mrs. Frick on the occasion of their wedding in December 1881. And I love that you see the evidence of the hammer marks. They haven't been kind of polished away. It's just this kind of beautiful um, Japanese inspired design with these applied decorations of oak leaves and berries and little pine cones. Um, and then if you look at the bottom, because when we're talking about decorative arts, we always like to look at the bottom, we can usually learn a lot about objects. You see the maker's mark, there's the whiting manufacturer mark here. Um, this tells you that it's sterling silver and um, a rough date range for the early 1880s, which of course ties in with the fact that it was a wedding gift. And then two other objects, these are not related to dining, but they are silver, so we store them in the vault here. These are objects from a dresser service that um, Mrs. Frick used. So once again, you see her monogram on the top here in a slightly different font style, AHCF. And a dresser service was used to store your makeup and powders and lotions, um, and also just to be decoration on your dresser. And this piece is so fabulous. It has this really great Renaissance Revival decoration with these very funny little masks and shields and castles. You know, it looks like an object that's fit for royalty. Uh, and then if, you, if we pop this open, You'll see that it's washed with um, a, a gilt lining on the inside. And then this is her powder puff that she would have used for face powder. And then related from the same service is this little box, which looks like kind of miniature casket or trunk complete with a little keyhole and little feet. The same monogram there on the top. And she would have used this to store bobby pins and hair pins and any other little things that you didn't want to disappear from your dresser. And this piece, if we look at the bottom of this one, um, it tells us it was made by Tiffany and Company. And, and I always love looking at Tiffany objects because they have a lot of information on the bottom. We know the C tells us it was made under the directorship of Thomas Cook and that dates it to between 1902 and 1907. And then there's an order number and a patent number, which also gives us more information about this, which matches up with um, the family archives. We know that Mrs. Frick purchased this dresser set in 1904. Thank you for taking a look inside the vault with me. I hope you enjoyed our little mini tour of silver. Thank you so much to Rad for their generous support of our programming over the years and for making this video series possible.